Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice and to attend a meeting of public bodies that any business affecting their interests as discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, Moffitt Township Board of Education approved this meeting. Notice of the meeting can be posted to the municipal building, or Moffitt Public Schools, or Moffitt Public Library, or Moffitt Township Board of Education Administrative Office Building, or Moffitt Public School website, and advertise the daily record. Thank you, Mr. Peters. High School Student Representative Report. Good evening, Jenny and Genevieve. How are you? It's been great. Back from a good break. Please. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, first, welcome to sports. The boys' basketball team is doing incredibly well this season, and the record is now 7-2. and two. They hope to gain another win tonight against Hanover Park High School. The girls' team is also doing great, and won last night against Bernardsville 62-57. to 57. Basketball players senior Jacob Kaplan and junior Kellyanne O'Reilly are near achieving their 1,000th career points. The cheer team held a home competition this weekend. The place was absolutely packed at the high school, and the performances were excellent. Over 10 teams came to the high school and were able to perform some spectacular cheering. The wrestling team finished third at the annual Wenatchee Valley Tournament two weeks ago and crowned three individual champions. The hockey team won last night against Westmore Central High School, bringing their record to seven wins, five losses, and one tie. And the Star Ledger poll recently announced that Joshua Barron is the best goalie in Morris County, as well as Vincent Armada is the best skater in the county. They received upwards of 4,000 votes. For the clubs, the spring musical Wiggly Blonde is coming along greatly, and it seems like it's going to be a spectacular production. The Key Club has revealed their theme for the annual volleyball marathon. This year it will be Disney. Students from across Morris County will form teams of six to ten players to battle it out on February 20th. Emily Liao, Jackie Moldowski, and David Champion were recently selected to the 2015 Regional Chorus. The forensics team had an amazing three-prong attack two weeks ago. At the Sunvitational Tournament in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, in the round robin, Jay Surratt placed fourth in extemporaneous speaking, and Noah Wanklash won original oratory. At the second day event that followed, two-day event that followed, Noah Wanklash was quarterfinalist in original oratory in impromptu and a semifinalist in extemporaneous. James Burnett was a quarterfinalist in oral interpretation and a finalist in dramatic interpretation, placing fifth out of over 80 competitors. Jay Surratt was semifinalist in extemporaneous placing seventh and a finalist in impromptu, placing third out of over 120 competitors. At the Newark Invitational at Science Park High School, in Varsity LD, James Min was a double octave finalist. In Novice LD, Park Agrawal was a double octave finalist. Andrew Sun Yen was an octave finalist. Inak Joe was a quarter finalist and second ranked speaker. And at Chaminade High School in Long Island, New York. In declamation, Anjali Shah received honorable mention, Nithya Chinapali placed 11th, and Arushi Gupta placed 10th. In extent, Chris Mayer placed 8th, and in Congress, Matt Goldberg placed 11th, and Pramal Kumar placed 4th. Moving on to our school, the Governor's Educator Award was just announced, and teacher Michelle Lorenzo received this honor for the high school. And for the Governor's Educational Services Professional Award, librarian Jennifer Keneally was announced as that recipient. Going forward, the spring sports are rapidly approaching, and students are either getting excited to play or watch the sports. Sign up for team and teams and trial schedules are in the making. So we're looking forward to what's to come. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any questions from the board for the students? I, I just want to make a, a quick comment. I don't want to belabor it. Thank you. It's an excellent report. And, and for parents that are here uh, whose children are in, the, are in elementary school, there's so many wonderful things going on in high school that you will learn about. Uh, one thing that you were both talking about was the forensics team, which on a national scale now is doing some incredible things. So as your children reach and rise and get to the higher levels, be thinking about these great activities. That's just one of many at the high school. Congratulations to you, Jim. Thank you, Matt. I think um, also there was an event last week uh, put on by the art department. I don't know if any of you guys were there. Oh, the Montville Mud. Pardon? The Montville Mud. Yeah. Which was also, I, I totally forgot to put that in. Well, I'll, I'll, it was over in the high school library. I believe it was Monday or Tuesday. I'm not sure which. But fantastic again. I think that was the second or third year. The interesting thing was 
a lot of our own students from awards, but there were a lot of students from districts close by us and far away, as far as Park Ridge, Bridgewater. We had about seven or eight representatives from various art schools and colleges, and uh, Sharon Pope did a, a tremendous job, and I'm looking forward to the one next year. He wanted to make it, to advertise, and see the works that are presented by the high school students. It's unbelievable, and I would encourage you to try to be here. Thank you, Charles. Um, before we get to the superintendent's report, um, which will be a lead-in uh, to honoring uh, the governor's teacher and governor's educational services professional of the year, uh, tonight is our pleasure and honor to recognize uh, those professionals in our school district who have been chosen for these awards. Uh, this year, two awards will be given. Uh, uh, two from each school, one for classroom, one for specialists. Um, and before I pass the mic to Dr. Freed, for all the staff and all the teachers, and especially those who are recognizing tonight and honoring tonight, please know how much the board appreciates your work now and throughout the year. You are the most essential part of a quality education, and for that we thank you. You are our bedrock and our foundation. So it is with great pleasure that I pass the mic to Dr. Freed as he introduces our honorees tonight. Thank you, Karen. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for being here. It's wonderful to see so many people in this room. Sometimes we only have a handful. So this is quite a treat for us. Thank you for being here again. Uh, tonight's a very special night, as Karen said, where we honor uh, individuals from our teaching and professional staff. Um, who, through a process, were selected to be either the Governor's Educator uh, Teacher Award or the Governor's Educational Services Professional Award. Uh, the process has changed this year. Um, those of you involved in the past or aware of it in the past, we only had the opportunity to choose one individual per school, and this year the State Education Department made a change in the process, allowing us to choose two individuals one from each of the two categories I mentioned. So we're thrilled that we have those individuals here, and our uh, principals and other administrators are here, supervisors, directors, assistant principals, uh, are here to both um, uh, support those individuals, and we are asking one of those administrators to say some brief remarks about those educators. Uh, we also, I also see out here many, many staff members who are here to support their colleagues, and I see children here as well, uh, who are probably here to support their teachers, and it's wonderful for the community to come out for this, um, this occasion. So we are going to begin uh, with um, Cedar Hill tonight, um, and um, I'll be asking uh, Principal Bill Cicernos to come forward to the microphone. Um, and to, um, no, I did because we started with um, Hilldale. <laughs> did I? I'm sorry. I'm reading from a piece of paper. So I'll try again. We're going to start with Hilldale tonight. Um, and I'll be asking Jill Cicernos to come up as the principal and to bring with her her uh, teacher. Um, of the year first, and then um, we'll be doing all the teachers first, and then we'll bring you up the second time. Well, you know what? Let's do that. Let's do all the teachers first, and then we'll bring you up the second time for your educators of the year. Good evening. I would like to introduce our teacher of the year, Mrs. Sandy Weber. She started at Hilldale in 2006 as a student teacher in fourth grade. And then in 2007, she was hired full time in that fourth grade class. She has been very involved in her tenure here. She was a cheerleading coach, student council advisor, medlic director. She is currently um, part of the technology committee, book club, safety committee. When I asked the staff to describe Mrs. Weber, um, they gave some responses as selfless, dedicated, driven, hardworking, compassionate, color-coded, we have to know her to love it, tech savvy, and um, in my best Spanish, I can say she's excelente. So thank you for all you do, for listening to my ideas and always taking them a step further. 
Mrs. Weber. Thank you, congratulations. Now we're going to be asking uh, um, Dr. Pat Kennedy, the principal of Valley View, to come forward and to bring and introduce her teacher of the year. Presenter will be Dominic Esposito, the principal of Woodmont School, who will be bringing his Teacher of the Year forward. Good evening, members of the board. It's my pleasure to introduce. Is Maggie Beatty Woodmont's Teacher of the Year? Uh, when 
We engaged in a lot of vigorous debate and careful deliberation. One candidate clearly emerged as our Teacher of the Year. Maggie Beatty, an 11 year Woodmont veteran, co teaches fourth grade with last year's Teacher of the Year, Ms. Tina Janis. This dynamic duo sets our school ablaze with their passion for teaching and student learning. Maggie's always ready for the next big thing here at Woodmont. She serves as co advisor to our geography club. She plans and supervises our geography bee and had the vision to lay out the plans for a multicultural day. Her passion for the proposed event was infectious. Faculty eagerly embraced her ideas, and on a day when students are usually focused on leaving for spring break, our school was transformed into a giant airplane. They boarded, our students boarded an imaginary flight and embarked on a whirlwind tour of the seven continents. Rather than focus on going home and getting ready for the fun of the springtime, our students and staff focused on the next leg of their exciting journey. This year, Maggie is heading up two very important school initiatives. She facilitates a program through her participation in our Sunshine Committee. Whatever the historic visits of a Woodmont family, Maggie made this member of our Woodmont community a gift and a congratulatory card from our entire staff. We're always happy to welcome the newest member to the class of 2026. Maggie also co-advises and facilitates our Footprints program. This program is reserved for our girls in fourth and fifth grade. She facilitates lessons on her own time associated with girls' emotional development. She works with our female students to help them navigate the obstacles of their pre-adolescent years and helps prepare them for the challenges of middle school. Maggie earned a BS from Seton Hall University in elementary special education, an MA from William Patterson University in learning disabilities with an LDTC certification, and 30 plus credits from Montclair University. She holds also a New Jersey principal and supervisor certificate. I think the fact that so many of her colleagues are here tonight just is a testament to the high regard we hold for her. We're very proud that she was named our Teacher of the Year. Congratulations. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Michael Raj, the principal of Cedar Hill School, and he will be introducing his teacher of the year. champion. They are the one that will never give up on them and who understands the power of connection and continually insist they be, that they be the best that they can be. At times that may be difficult, especially when you are differentiating, modifying, and accommodating for all the children in your class. As an example, one day I walked into Maureen's classroom. She was alone looking at her iPhone and making hand gestures to the iPhone. Appropriate hand gestures, but hand gestures nonetheless. <laughs> I walk over to her and I inquire, what are you doing? And she says she was videotaping herself doing a foundations lesson because that's the way the children best understand the concept of the lesson. She truly embraces the philosophy that if a child cannot learn the way we teach them, then we must teach the way that they learn. Ms. Maureen Levera. <laughs> Thank you, congratulations. Um, representing Lazar Middle School, this is Sharon Carr, and perhaps other administrators as well, I'm not sure. Please come forward with your Teacher of the Year. Just so our elementary parents are aware, um, our middle school and high school teachers um, work closely with their principals and assistant principals and also with our supervisors and directors who are specialists in their particular content areas. So I made Sandy Schwartz come up with me. She is as happy for Cheryl as I am this evening. I would like to introduce all of you to Cheryl's own seventh grade life science teacher at Lazar Middle School. 
And in many ways, Cheryl is an, un is an unsung hero in our building. She's not only dedicated, passionate, and an outstanding science teacher, she's also a Maywood Simmons scholar and now an instructor as well. She continues her study through this program to bring back ideas for her colleagues, for her students, all the time. She goes to summer school when all of the rest of us are wishing we were on a beach. Cheryl is still in school, just for her students. She serves on the New Jersey Department of Education Committee for developing the middle school science curriculum. And most recently, and most exciting for Lazar, she navigated our science Olympiad team to an extraordinary, extraordinary um, competition, bringing home several medals and an invitation to the state competition in March, which we just found out today, which is very good news for us because we didn't know on the bus ride on the way home. Um, and on behalf of the Lazar family, congratulations, Cheryl, and thank you for making the difference. Congratulations. And now I'd like to introduce Mr. Doug Sanford, the principal of Monville Township High School. And again, he may be bringing others, I'm not sure. And to introduce his teacher of the year. Good evening, everyone. Uh, congratulations to all our other uh, award recipients. I start by uh, introducing Mrs. Michelle Lorenzo. She's a science teacher at the high school teaching our chemistry courses. Um, what I want to start off by saying is this is a particularly challenging speech for me to get through because not only do I think Michelle has a tremendous impact on the high school as a whole, um, she really has an impact on my job at the high school, what I do as a principal. Um, we work very closely together on the school's school improvement panel, which amongst other things, focuses a lot of time and energy on supporting our colleagues within the school, creating professional development experiences for them that, on the whole, will enhance the entire high school community. I can go on and on a list that we'd be here till sunrise about the different things, the different contributions that Ms. Lorenzo has, uh, the impact that she's had on the high school. But what I'll do is just talk about a few things that have happened over the course of this year leading into it. First, I can still remember uh, talking about reaching out to Mrs. Lorenzo because we had a need for science classes um, to make some schedule changes over the course of the summer. So the idea that we're going to be reaching out to a teacher, she already knows what her schedule is for the coming year, she's already started to plan, and lo and behold, surprise her and ask her to take on yet an additional course on top of a regular teaching mode, a course she's never taught before. It would be something different than all the other courses she'd be teaching. Now that, that alone is, is kind of a, a daunting task to think about, but Michelle didn't waver. She stepped up to the challenge. She recognized that the department and the school needed her, um, needed her to be the great teacher that she is. Um, so to do a fantastic job in the classroom, that would be all that we could ask. But that's not what she did. She took a class that was an elective course in our science department and reinvigorated the classroom experience for the students and turned it into something that really has had an impact on so many students, and I think we're going to see the enrollment in that class jump up dramatically in the coming year. Another piece I just want to focus on is how much I see um, with Ms. Lorenzo in terms of how she focuses on the art of teaching and the impact that she wants to have on her students, and also how she plans and reflects on what she does within the classroom. A couple final personal thoughts I want to stress is on a daily basis, I'm utterly impressed by Mrs. Lorenzo's professionalism and dedication. She truly respects her students and colleagues, who they are as people and their perspectives. She also devotes countless hours to her planning and to her own reflection. Students and staff alike respect Mrs. Lorenzo. They frequently turn to her for advice. For that, she's truly an invaluable member of our faculty. On behalf of all students and staff at Marple Township High School, Proud to recognize Mrs. Michelle Lorenzo as a teacher. I'm going to ask our seven teachers of the year to come back up because the Board of Education, I know, would like to shake your hand personally. And I also know that Sue Marinello, our uh, public relations. Um, 
colleague would be very much like to have a picture of all seven of you. So perhaps you can come around, shake our hands, and then stay right in the middle for Sue after you do that. Thank you, congratulations. And now we're going to begin with our Governor's Educational Service Professional Awards. And this time we will start with um, Cedar Hill and Dr. Raj, if you could play, bring your Professional Service Award recipient with you to the microphone. Good evening again. If you happen to walk into the halls of Cedar Hill School, you notice it's a beautiful school. And that is in large part due to Karen Stevens and the work that she does with the children. Karen Stevens is our art teacher. She brings out every child's inner artist and makes every child feel that they are the next Michelangelo, Picasso, or Monet. She has the ability to incorporate the love and passion while infusing, infusing the history of art. Anybody has the potential to be a great artist, but not everybody has the potential to be a great art teacher. Having worked with Ms. Stevens for nearly a decade, I would describe her approach to teaching art by a quote from Vincent Van Gogh, who I know she's been talking to the children in class with this week. If you hear a voice within you say, you cannot paint, then by all means paint, and that voice will be silenced. Karen, you silence all the children's voices who have doubts about their artistic ability, and Cedar Hill thanks you for it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. This is Jill Cicernos, the principal of Hildell School, to come forward with her educational service professional. This is um, Mrs. Rosalia Lenzo and Fusino. She is our speech and language specialist. Um, a little unknown fact for some is that um, Mrs. Lenzo Speaks, speaks, reads, and writes Italian, and I was going to do my whole speech in Italian, but we didn't get that far yet in world languages, but we're working on it. 
<laughs> Mrs. Lenzo can often be found working in her little corner at Hilldale with a group of students. She works very closely with the teachers to incorporate speech and language into her classroom. When I asked the staff um, to describe Mrs. Lenzo, I received words like dedicated, enthusiastic, optimistic, helpful, problem solver, personable, determined, and now I will try my Italian and say sempre serendente. Thank you for all your hard work, your dedication, and all you do at Hilldale. Thank you for always smiling and advocating for our students. Congratulations. I'll call upon Dr. Pat Kenley to come forward with her educational service with the professional.
But what I thought I would do tonight with Maria is share a, uh, a very brief but poignant story about how much she means to us and our staff. And I would go back to uh, back to school night when one of our teachers took ill and was in the hospital. And uh, for most of the staff members here across the district, they know how nerve wracking back to school night can be as a, as a teacher. Um, I'm sure for some of the parents as well. Uh, but I asked Maria very late in the day if she would cover and, and do the presentation for our first grade staff member. Um, not only did she say yes, she said, Dave, what, what else can I, can I do for you? Is there, is there a video? Is there something you want me to present specifically? I said, Maria, please just show up. Um, <laughs> not only did she show up, I stayed in the classroom for most of the, the 25, 30 minutes that she was there. Uh, the last five minutes, I went into the main office to announce the fact that school night had concluded, so I, I made an announcement on the uh, loudspeaker. And I mentioned that Maria has six, seven outstanding characteristics. Um, unfortunately, one of them is not being concise with her words. And uh, I was in the main office, and you could see through our window into the first grade classroom's window, Maria is still talking. And um, her husband was in the office with me. Her son goes to kindergarten at William Mason. Um, I don't know if it was for the great teachers there, or the principal, or whatever. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, I looked at her husband and I said, you know, Brian, this, this could take a while. And he said, Dave, I, I know I live with her. Um, <laughs> so I, I went inside my main, inside the main office where there's a phone, and I, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, we both called you and said that there was a minor emergency and we needed you in the office just to, to break up that. Uh, that meeting that night. So anyway, Maria is, is a team player, uh, a huge help, and probably one of the most polished professionals I've ever worked, at, ever worked with in my 17 years in education. So congratulations, Maria. Congratulations. We'd now like to move to um, Woodmont School. Uh, and ask Mr. Esposito to please come back to the microphone with his educational services professional. Staged by two year olds. <laughs> Keep an eye on them, Dr. Rush. Every great story needs an author, and every great motion picture needs a director. Tony M. Raj is the chronicler of the Woodmont tale, and the person most responsible for Woodmont's reputation as the Hollywood of Montville Township. Mrs. Raj serves as our media specialist, but the media specialist is more than the librarian. Knowledge is power. There's no better way to stay informed or involved than by utilizing technology to your advantage. Mobile devices, particularly smartphones, are now an extension of our body, and we look for real-time information from web applications. Seeking out information or participating in a school function is just a few clicks or steps away. Mrs. Raj successfully harnesses our community to this information, whether it's through a video magazine, staff-created professional development shorts, or school event videos. Woodmont stakeholders are engaged in best practices and exposed to what gives Woodmont its special flavor. Tony is currently working towards being a Google certified educator. This certification requires her to pass five time, time exams. When she achieves this certificate, she will hold the distinction of being the only Google certified educator in our district. She facilitates the building media committee and consistently provides professional development to our staff in ways that media can enhance content delivery and prepare our students for their upcoming park exams. A wife and mother, Mrs. Raj is married to Cedar Hill Principal Dr. Michael Raj, a distinction which should qualify her for sainthood, but unfortunately that decision is beyond my pay grade. She holds a BS in Human and Behavior Sciences from Felician College, and an MS in Elementary Education School Library Media Specialist from William Patterson University. I'm going to go off script now for a moment, just tell a quick story. At the beginning of my time as with my principal, I was having lunch with Mike Raj, and we were walking in the parking lot. Mike, you know, made the, I quickly made the connection with Raj, Raj. And Mike looked to me and said, I want you to know, Dom, that Tony Ann's going to be your ally in that building. Well, Mike was really being humble, because Tony Ann really is not, not just my ally. 
She is the ally of every teacher, every student, every parent who wants to make Woodmont the best school it can be. She tirelessly dedicates herself to doing whatever it takes to make our school better and better. And she, I'm very proud of the leadership role that she's taken on this year and how she's really demonstrating how we can really utilize media to the advantage of all our students. So it's my pleasure to congratulate Mrs. Tony and Raj. Lots of laughing. <laughs> Our next uh, presenter will be Mrs. Sharon Carr to present uh, Lazar Middle School's Educational Services Professional Award. Tommy and Mike, Grandma Sharon will gladly take a turn with that beautiful baby. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, Dr. Kim Mooney is not with us here tonight. She did have a prior commitment. She, um, very, very sad that she couldn't come. She expressed her thanks and gratitude for this prestigious recognition and told me to type what I, what I write down so that she can read it tomorrow morning. Uh, she is an extraordinary professional, works tirelessly, morning, noon, and night, with our child study team, helping our staff, working with our students. She also serves um, as an educational consultant on our INRS 504 committee. Her patience, understanding, and expertise in her field are unparalleled. We're so fortunate to have her working with our children. Um, we thank her for making a difference, and we will read the rest of her speech to her tomorrow when she comes to school. And Karen gets the hug that I was going to get to uh, that I was going to give to Kim. <laughs> thank you. And uh, Mr. Doug Sanford, please come forward to introduce your educational services professional. Let me, <coughs> let me introduce Mrs. Jennifer Keneally, our educational services professional of the year. I mean, those mine, I'm going to call the ESP of the year. That's a long phrase there. Uh, Mrs. Keneally has been with the school district for a total of uh, 10 years. She's been an educator for 11 years. What I need to point out, though, is she's been a teacher at Montville Township High School for about eight and a half years, because now she has been with us as our media specialist for the last year and a half. So just bear that in mind as I go through what I'm going to say about Mrs. Keneally, the idea that she did transition from the English classroom and became our media specialist at the high school. Revered and respected as an English teacher, Mrs. Keneally held her students to high standards, challenged them to find their own words and voices, and prepared them well for the journey through high school and beyond. As our media specialist, her impact on MTHS has increased exponentially. Not in any matter to detract from the good work of, of, of her colleagues and teachers, I'd like to call your attention to just some of the differences that Mrs. Keneally has had to embrace since changing roles within our school. As an English teacher, she possesses a mastery of the English language, literature, grammar, all the things that go along with that classroom experience. However, in order to benefit the whole school as a media specialist, Mrs. Keneally has had to become a jack of all trades. She once compared Twain and Thoreau in the English classroom. Now she needs to be able to support teachers in French 5, AP Euro, molecular biology. These topics are all over the map and aren't just, don't just have to do with the English classroom. She also, has to be able to work with, she also has to be able to work with an unpredictable number of students before, during, and after school. Their needs can range from such things as I need to charge my cell phone or print a paper that's due period three, to where do I start my research on topics like how the automotive industry was impacted by World War II. I don't call your attention to these differences because they highlight her adaptability, which they clearly do. The reason I call your attention to these differences is to accentuate a more defining characteristic of Mrs. Kimmel. That is, she truly embraces the belief that educators aren't the gatekeepers of knowledge. Rather, they are tour guides on the journey of discovery. Jen's transition to the Media Center has showcased her ability to engage students and teachers alike as active learners to give them the tools to find information, sort it, identify it, and synthesize various sources. 
MTHS is the benefactor of Mrs. Keneally's ability to give us the tools that transcend any singular classroom and prepare us to be creative and critical thinkers. On behalf of the students and staff at MTHS, we're proud to recognize Ms. Keneally as our ESP of the year. Congratulations, and as we did before, I'd ask our seven um, award winners to please come forward to shake the Board of Education's hands and to stay for a moment for some pictures. So please stay for your pictures, and um, I know that the audience came this evening for these special recognitions. If you would, if you wouldn't mind staying another two or three minutes after this, I would appreciate it, and I'll explain why in a moment. Stick around for just two more minutes. Uh, then the board's going to take a short recess. Um, Dr. Cordellino is going to get into a short recess first, but I'm kind of usurping her power momentarily. So one of the items on the agenda tonight is the fact that January in New Jersey is School Board Recognition Month. And very often, as I said at the beginning of the meeting, we have a handful of people in the audience. So I'm going to take advantage of the fact that we have a full house to talk about this recognition of school board members and to say a few words. Um, our school board members work tirelessly on behalf of the children and community in the school district. And uh, they do so without any pay oftentimes without much recognition. Oftentimes the people in the audience it's because they have a problem they'd like to share with um, And most of the emails they get, which also come to me, um, are also usually about problems as opposed to thank yous and recognition. So I did want to take this moment tonight to uh, say how much I appreciate uh, all of the hard work that they do uh, I work with them very closely. Uh, it's been five years now, and many of the members up here were here when I was hired. <clears throat> and I can tell you firsthand that the community, the schools, and the kids in particular are in very good hands. So I did want to congratulate them and recognize them. And next month, we're going to have a little surprise for them, which I didn't do tonight because we already have a full house, uh, to show them our appreciation. So congratulations, school board members, and thank you for everything you do for the students, uh, the community, the parents, and our staff members.
the award tonight. First, uh, it was just really so nice to see the specialists be recognized um, in, in their various categories. Um, so I, I was, it, it was, it was just nice to see that. Second, it was wonderful to see the enthusiasm in the room for our teaching staff, uh, for each other and from the parents and the community. So thank you for that. And it was also wonderful to see the camaraderie among the administrators uh, between the, among the buildings. Um, obviously, things are fun and uh, it's always great to learn in a fun environment. So thank all of you for coming out tonight. And, I, and if other board members want to jump in, please do, and then we'll recess for five minutes. Yeah, Karen, I, I, I did want to say that, that in, in, in this era, in these few years, where there are, are so many torpedoes and missiles being fired at public education, this is an evening that we all need to really revel in and enjoy. There, there are uh, terms like uh, dedicated and leadership and devotion and impact and unsung hero and even great describer uh, about our teachers. And, and, and I agree with you, Karen, to see the camaraderie amongst the administrators and, and colleagues to come out and, and parents and students. How wonderful, congratulations, you all deserve it. We just had a wonderful group of people in our <coughs> employees of this district. Thank you. Yeah, I've been on the board 21 years now, and it's, I think this was one of the best programs regarding the staffing, from the administrators to the teachers to the support staff. Uh, the only one disappointment I had was I saw a lady bringing flowers back there, and I assumed she was bringing them up to me. <laughs> but on a serious note, thank you all, and for your support and the job you do for our kids and your kids. Thank you. some remarks about PARC. So if anyone is interested in hearing those remarks, uh, just come back into the room after, after our recess. So I'll recess for five minutes. So good evening once again. Um, I'm going to start with the next item on your presentations, uh, the only remaining item, which is the HIP report card presentation. Um, we need to do this once a year, and um, um, and after this I will make some brief remarks about the PARC testing. Um, so the, um, the HIP report card can be found on the district website, that is required by law, so uh, you can have your very own copy. Um, from the website. And um, the report card is a self-assessment, which means that we are to look at the various categories that fall under the HIP requirement for the report card, and each school uh, does a self-assessment. Um, Leslie Sheffman, who is our Director of Guidance Services, K-12 in the district, and oversees our anti-bullying specialists, coordinators, um, she, in fact, um, works with the uh, anti-bullying specialists and principals in our seven buildings um, as they go through the various categories. Uh, these categories include things like having programs to um, help uh, deter um, harassment, intimidation, and bullying kinds of practices, uh, various training um, uh, regarding the uh, policy that the board has, um, category called other staff instruction and training programs, curriculum and instruction based on HIP-related information and skills, 
personnel in place, which we have in all of our buildings in terms of our anti-bullying specialist and coordinator. Um, incident reporting procedure, which we do on a monthly basis, and you will see uh, every board meeting the Board of Education is approving the previous two weeks um, um, HIV reports, the investigation procedures, um, category again, just get in general HIV reporting, and then we come up with a grade. Uh, the maximum grade you can get is 78, and um, our district grade was 74. So we're very pleased with where we are with our self-reporting. Um, and um, I would ask the board if they have any questions. Okay, thank you. And once again, our community can find this report on our website. And so I would now like to make those couple of remarks about the park testing. Um, park testing has been in the news very recently and even more so recently. Uh, it has become a bit of a controversial subject with some uh, parents uh, within uh, various states that are using park testing. I think, is there 10 states presently? 10, 12, around 10, I think, that are using the park test. And parents in various states, including New Jersey, have uh, made comments, uh, asked questions, voiced concerns about the testing, sometimes about the frequency, the length, the format, because it's now a computer or technology based. Um, and more specifically, I've been asked um, um, by just a couple of parents recently in writing about our policy, if you will, with regard to testing and if there is a refusal uh, to be tested on the part of any of our parents. Um, the State Education Department, the Department of Education, has issued uh, some um, um, documents, some guidance for us to look at with regard to what is being called opting out uh, or refusal to take the testing of the tests when they come along. Um, the Department of Education's position is that there is no opt-out policy, so that we can't have a policy that says students are allowed to opt out. On the other hand, parents, of course, have a lot of prerogatives legally about their children's education, and parents, of course, can make decisions about those kinds of, um, of issues. So uh, specifically, uh, because there is no policy that's required uh, for their actually uh, with regard to park testing, our Board of Education isn't being asked or advised to create an actual policy. Therefore, from my perspective, it falls into an administrative procedure about how we will handle uh, families, students, parents who are um, opting out, if you will, of the tests. Um, so one thing that uh, we will not do is we will not punish students or create any consequences for students with regard to their that decision. Um, we will not have a student sit in front of a computer uh, for the testing period um, and stare at the computer and feel uncomfortable in the testing environment. Uh, we will instead um, have the child uh, whose parent has written us, let's say, that, that note, uh, excusing their child from the testing, <clears throat> to be in an alternative environment, uh, potentially a study hall, a media center, where they would be supervised and where they could read for that testing period of time. Um, so that is our administrative position on the situation. Um, uh, we would, of course, be looking to, uh, if parents are opting out, for them to that in writing, so we do have it in writing. Um, and with regard to the makeup tests, uh, because that can go on actually for a several week period of time, we also would respect that opt out to include those makeup tests. We wouldn't then bring the student back into the environment if the parent has already said that they're not allowing their child to take the test. So, um, at some point in time, and I'll certainly want the board's reaction to what I've just said, but at some point in time, uh, we will put something out uh, to our community 
so they understand the process that we would use if the student does in fact um, opt out of the test um, and certainly I'll be responding to any individual who sends us correspondence uh, letting them know, uh, letting you know, if they're letting us know that, they, that their child is about to take the test when the test period uh, comes along. So I'll ask our board if they have any questions or comments about that. Yeah. Again, just so I'm clear, you said the state has no opt-out provision. Does that mean that the state simply has no position on it, or does it mean that the state's official position, whether or not it's legally enforceable, is that students are not allowed to opt out? The state's position is that um, they believe the park test is a valuable test. Um, there's differences of opinion, um, and certainly I think there is value in, in, in assessments, uh, but they have a position where they believe it's a valuable test, that all students should take it, and they don't have, um, I guess again, the, the ability or the policy to allow students to opt out. They're asking school districts uh, that if a child, let's say, is absent the day of the test, uh, that you use your attendance policy in that case, and certainly we would. If a child is absent, they are marked absent. Um, if a child was disruptive in the testing environment, then certainly we have our discipline policies and things like behavior policies and things like that. Um, but the state is leaving the decision about what you would do if a child says, I'm in school today, but I'm not going to be taking the test, or a parent, uh, is written as a note and said my child is not to take the test, they have left it up to school districts to make the decision about how you will, at that time, treat the child, handle the situation. Okay. Dr. Freed, is the state asking you to track numbers of students who are opting out? We've received some correspondence from our um, county executive superintendent uh, asking us if we have had any students um, at that particular period of time who have let us know, any parents, that their child would not be um, taking the test. And so superintendents did respond back to her about that. So there's no foreseeable ramifications to the children if they don't take it? Um, there's no individual ramification. In other words, again, if a child is disruptive, like they were disrupted in any environment or but um, there could potentially be ramifications to the school district that when I do send out my announcement to the community about this, I will include this part because um, from the uh, waiver that the that the participating school districts you have to remember that the districts participating in this are receiving money from the federal government. That's part of the process. And one of the requirements for the federal government is that 95% of the students participate in the testing process. So theoretically, if less than 95% of our students participated, there could be ramifications for the school district, not for individual students. We're not clear what those ramifications or consequences, and they be creating an improvement plan for the future. Um, we're not sure what that would mean. Uh, yes, just to uh, go one step further, uh, to, to your knowledge, uh, you meet uh, superintendents roundtable and so on. Are other districts having uh, similar problems and uh, are we, it seems like we're going into uncharted waters here, are, are we creating a policy that is unique or are there other districts that maybe you know of that are, are creating something similar, you know, that might yeah. Every, every district across the state is facing similar kinds of decisions. And at our last roundtable meeting, and Casey uh, attends with me, um, we did hear from different districts about their thoughts. And I would, I would say most are kind of in the same ballpark as we are. Yeah, I, I think most are in the same ballpark. I have seen, again, through emails, that there are some districts that have decided to adopt what is being called sit and stare, 
where if a student refuses to take the test, they would have a child in the testing environment staring at the screen for an hour. Um, that's never the way that I will uh, act toward students that I'm kind of taking care of. Um, so, uh, but most, uh, most superintendents are moving forward with a, um, a, a sense of, we're not going to punish students very often. It's the decision of their parents, of course. Uh, our students can be as young as eight years old in third grade taking these tests. Um, so we're not going to punish our students. Uh, but again, we're also not going to provide <clears throat> entertainment for them or, uh, or a different learning environment for them. We would put them in an environment where they're comfortable but where they would have to read uh, for, the, for that period of time. Just wondered what other districts. Yeah, everyone's facing, and, and there are some districts uh, where there are many parents who are already um, looking to move in this direction. That hasn't been our experience in Montville Township right now.
And, and that would be what process are we going to follow and what timeline uh, does the board have in mind? Um, so I, I, I'll share with you that um, our business administrator, Mr. Tevis, has sent out requests for proposals uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, firms have responded and the board is vetting those materials now. The board will set up interviews uh, with some of the, inter of the search firms. These are firms that are, um, they specialize in searching for superintendents. Um, and uh, once a firm is selected, we will develop a process to attract a suitably qualified candidate. Um, during our last search, uh, during our last search process, the process that brought us Dr. Freed, uh, the firm, the search firm did hold a number of stakeholder meetings to identify qualities that the Montville community was seeking in a superintendent. Um, they, with our input uh, and the community's input, created an advertisement to recruit. Um, the candidates are vetted by the search firm and the most qualified candidates are presented to the board for vetting, further vetting and interviews. It was a very thorough process and so I think the board will be following a similar process uh, this time and our uh, timeline is to have a superintendent, uh, a new superintendent seated by July 1st. Um, so that's our plan. And that's how we're going to go about it. Um, and uh, I don't know if anyone else on the board wants to comment about that. So I will open it now to the public for items on the agenda. Okay, I'll close public participation and motion for items I through O. Motion. Charlie is not. I would like to make one change if I may. Uh, on item, page 13, item L2, number 4, the resignation of Paul Freed. I would like to add that with regret. In the minutes, please. So my motion, that's what I'll read. I thought we were checking on any other stuff, I'm sure. No. Second. Uh, any questions on item I? J? Why? Uh, yes, my Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I thought we were. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So, questions on the J? Okay. Question on J, just a clarification. On the committee assignments, if anybody cannot make the meeting, when I understand the person who passed, I know we change the chair responsibility, you get somebody, and then copy the chairman of the committee, letting him know that Johnny won't be here and Susan will be here. That's the process we follow. Thank you, Charlie. Right. Yep. Uh, Kay? Yes, uh, Karen, I, I, I just wanted to mention item K5, 1 to 4. Uh, item K5, 1 to 4. Uh, so pleased that the Board of Ed is uh, working and, and helping this extremely valuable program that occurs in alternate years. I know that a number of us have been to the Living Lessons program, and uh, I would just say that on May 14th, I know I'll be there and I'll, I hope to see other board members there. Um, there, is, uh, there are many valuable programs in this district. This is an extremely valuable program for the students. Thank you, Mike, for that. Um, any uh, questions on L? <laughs> Get it out. <laughs> Not a question, just a comment. An L24, and you know, I said this before, I won't belabor the point. Uh, I've been here 10 years now, and I've never actually taken a resignation room or retirement with regret, not because I don't have regret, but because I've always been afraid of maybe hurting the feelings of someone I didn't say regrets for. I'm going to do L24 with both regret for losing Dr. Freed and with 
the same contempt I have for the governor's office I had a month ago for, in my opinion, stealing from this district one of the best superintendents we've ever had under the charade of trying to save taxpayer money when the only thing the superintendent's salary cap has done has stolen great talent from many districts, including Montville. Um, you know, if the governor was concerned with saving money and he wanted to cut every school district's budget, I wouldn't agree with his priorities, but I can at least see the rational basis for it. There is no rational basis for the salary cap other than perhaps intentionally draining talent out of the districts to try to destroy public education, to drive people into charter and public schools like his children attend, where, sorry, private schools like his children attend, where rich cronies and political hacks can make money with our children in the education business. But that's just my opinion. I'm so sorry to see you go, Dr. Freed. You're going to be missed. And it's, it's my hope that when we go looking for a new superintendent, we're going to be fortunate and get somebody really good, not end up like some of the other districts, some of them very close to us, that had to go out and get a new superintendent after you had already run him out of town. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm so happy that under L3 number four that Mike just got elected to the board and already were appointing him as a substitute. <laughs> How can I get my name on that? that that's a different, that's a different, uh, Michael. <laughs> it's a great name. <laughs> Mike, thank you. I, I, think, I think you already received that teacher's email, so isn't it? Yeah. I got a very warm welcome to see you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, fixed, we fixed that. Mike, I just want to say thank you for making those comments. Um, I know they're heartfelt, and I know that we all feel the way you do. I think, I think it's fair to say we all feel that way. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll press on. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Anne? I did actually want to... Any questions on M? Or there is no N? Oh, uh, roll call then. Mr. Grubb. Yes, on everything except the uh, minutes for December 2nd. I abstain. Mr. Jo uh, Johnson? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Morell. Yes. Mr. Johnson? Abstaining on. K1, check number 77998 on L4.3, on M134, and just clarifying again that the Michael Johnson in L3 and L6, happy coincidence, but no relation, and not me. Yes to everything else. Dr. Mordra? Oh, I'm sorry, he's not here. Uh, Mr. O'Brien? Aye. What does a revoke for? No, on L24. What would happen if we did that, Mr. Attorney? He's still leaving. Well, I'm going to abstain on the minutes for December 2nd and yes on everything else if the deepest of regrets on L24. Dr. King? It's pretty hard to vote on this ball, but uh, yes. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Courtney. Uh, yes, abstain on check number 78115 and uh, with regret on L24. Motion's passed. Thank you. Um, any other business or additional reports? Um, I, I just want to mention uh, I, along with uh, Mike and Matt, happened to be in attendance at the World Language Town Hall meeting. Um, it was very... Which uh, Mike? Mike Palma. It's going to get fun. And um, it, it, it was very interesting to hear people's perspectives, but it did validate the value of, at, at, 
you know, the perspective that validated the um, value of teachers in, in front of students. So that was nice. Um, and also the Northern New Jersey Chinese Association held their New Year's celebration on January 11th. Um, it's always a fun-filled event. Congressman Freeland Heisen was there. What date was that? That was January 11th. In New Jersey, Northern New Jersey Chinese Association, their New Year's celebration. That's a school that uses our auditorium. Oh, with Margaret? Yeah. Um, and Charlie, you mentioned Mount Mud. Uh, I know some of you tried to get there. I have one more. Hmm? I have one day, I think. Go ahead, Jonathan. No, I want to let everyone know, too, that well, seven of you, that the high school library renovation project is moving along. Thank you. 